Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Here's a recent article from ABC News. Greenland ice sheet melting faster than previously thought, scientists say. Melting in the Arctic could have catastrophic consequences on the planet. And here's another article. Greenland's glaciers might be melting 100 times as fast as previously thought. This came from a computer model out of the University of Texas. We've heard the propaganda from the press. Now let's take a look at what's actually going on in Greenland. This composite of graphs from the Danish Meteorological Institute shows the surface mass balance of Greenland over the last seven years. The surface mass balance is the difference between snow accumulation and melt on the surface of the Greenland ice sheet. For five of the last seven years, including this year, the surface of the Greenland ice sheet has gained more ice than the 1981 to 2010 mean. The mean is shown as this gray line in the graph. Since September 1st of last year, the Greenland ice sheet surface has gained almost 600 billion tons of ice. The surface mass balance was also above average during 2017, 2018, 2021, and 2022. But never mind actual data, ABC News and some scientists say the Greenland ice sheet is melting faster than previously thought. And the University of Texas says Greenland's glaciers might be melting 100 times as fast as previously thought. This is fairly typical climate propaganda, which has nothing to do with reality. Greenland is gaining ice now, but it wasn't always that way. In 1939, it was reported that all the glaciers in eastern Greenland were rapidly melting. It may without exaggeration be said that the glaciers of Greenland, like those in Norway, face the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. This was reported by Professor Hans Allman, who was the leading Arctic expert of his time. These photographs are from a paper he wrote documenting disappearance of glaciers in Norway. The top picture was 1869, the second picture is 1933, and the bottom picture is 1946. In 1952, a leading American expert, Dr. William Carlson, said the polar ice caps are melting at an astonishing and unexplained rate and were threatening to swamp seaports by raising the ocean levels. He said that the glaciers of Norway and Alaska were only half the size they were 50 years earlier. Here's an article from 1903 documenting the melting of Greenland's largest glacier, the Jacobshaven Glacier. During the second half of the 19th century, the Jacobshaven Glacier retreated about 8 miles and lost 20 to 30 feet in depth. The glacier retreated very quickly from 1850 to 1950, and then the retreat slowed quite a bit. And in recent years, the Jacobshaven Glacier has been growing, according to NASA. According to the official hockey stick graph of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the second half of the 19th century was the coldest 50-year period on record. Yet Greenland's largest glacier was melting very rapidly during this time, and now the glacier is growing. So if we believe the hockey stick graph, we also have to believe that Greenland's glaciers melt very quickly when it's cold, and they grow when it's hot. This is the point in the video when climate alarmists will normally start shouting about this map and graph. The graph shows that Greenland has been losing ice over the last 20 years, and the map shows that the ice loss has been around the periphery. This map is generated by looking at changes in gravity over time, as measured by satellites. But if we compare the gravity map to the surface mass balance map, we see the exact opposite. The surface mass balance map showed that the periphery of Greenland gained a lot of ice last year. According to the gravity map, this area of Greenland has been losing a lot of ice. That's where the Glacier Girl aircraft crash landed in 1942. And 50 years later, the aircraft was dug up, buried under hundreds of feet of ice. Yet according to the gravity map, that area of Greenland is losing ice. These gravity maps and graphs are worthless, and I'm going to show you now why. There's a number of different things which can cause changes in gravity over time. One possibility is changes in the thickness of the very thin layer of ice on top. 
And the other thing that can cause gravity changes are changes in the very thick layer of rock underneath it. If we look at the fine prints of the gravity map and graph, we can see what the problem is. It should be noted that the changes in mass illustrated here have not been corrected for the changes in mass due to glacial isostatic adjustment. Without getting into much detail, the key point here is that they don't have any idea what the rocks are doing underneath the ice. In other words, this map and graph are meaningless. Their map shows ice melting in places where it is rapidly accumulating. A few years ago, the editor of The Lancet wrote, The case against science is straightforward. Much of the scientific literature, perhaps half, may simply be untrue. Afflicted by studies with small sample sizes, tiny effects, invalid exploratory analyses, and flagrant conflicts of interest, Together with an obsession for pursuing fashionable trends of dubious importance, science has taken a turn towards darkness. As one participant put it, poor methods get results. So let's go back to the original article from ABC News. Greenland ice sheet melting faster than previously thought, scientists say. For the right price, you can get some academics to say anything you want. So corrupt news organizations like ABC News team up with corrupt academics to produce this sort of propaganda. I'm going to finish this video up with a discussion of this sentence. Melting in the Arctic could have catastrophic consequences on the planet. Let's go back in time 5,000 years to when trees grew all the way to the edge of the Arctic Ocean in Canada and the mean July temperature along the northern coastline of Russia may have been 2.5 to 7 degrees Celsius warmer than now. The Arctic was much warmer 5,000 years ago, and there was little, if any, Arctic sea ice. According to the claims from ABC News, civilization must have collapsed. But the exact opposite was true. That was around the time when the Egyptian pyramids and Stonehenge were built. History shows us that civilization thrives during warm periods and does very poorly when it's cold. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for the past 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.